Okay, the distance formula measures the distance between two points. So let's talk about how we get the distance formula first and then I'll show you how to use it. So say you have two random points. I'll call this one P and this one Q. And P is X1 comma Y1 and Q is X2 comma Y2. So this would represent the X1, this would represent the Y1. This will represent the x2, and around about here will represent the y2. Okay, and so we want to figure out what is the length or the distance between those two points. The way we can figure out that distance is we can create a right triangle. So I'm going to create a right triangle with that distance being my hypotenuse. And the reason I want to create a right triangle is because I know whenever I have a right triangle, I can use what's called the Pythagorean theorem, which says a squared plus b squared equals c squared, when a and b represents the two sides and c represents the hypotenuse. And so the only thing I would need to know is what is the distances of these two sides, and then I can use that to figure out what is the length of the hypotenuse. And so basically, how would I figure out what this distance is if I know this x1 and this x2? So think about this. If x1 is 1 and x2 is 5, then what would be the distance of this side? It would be 4. Hopefully that's what you said. And how do you get that? You do 5 minus 1 to figure out what's the length of that little segment right there. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to take the bigger x and subtract the smaller x from it. I'm missing my comma there, or parentheses. So the length of this side is x2 minus x1. And so the same thing over here, if this is 1 and this is 7, what will be the length of this side right here? It will be 6. How do you know that? You do 7 minus 1, which is 6. So for this side, you would do the bigger y, y2 minus the smaller y, y1. And so that gives you the lengths of these sides. And so you, it doesn't matter which one you use for a or b, but we say x1 or x2 minus x1 is one side, and then y2 minus y1 is the other side, and instead of saying c, we're gonna say d. d is gonna represent that distance right there. And so if I wanna solve for d, I just get rid of the square by taking the square root of both sides. And usually when you take the square root of both sides, you take the positive and the negative square root, but since distance can't be negative, you can basically ignore the negative answer this time around. So I'm gonna write it this way, but you get d is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So that's the distance formula, and basically that's where it comes from. You take that line segment that you're trying to find the distance of, create a right triangle around it with that line segment being the hypotenuse. And so basically you wanna take the difference in the x's squared and the difference in the y squared, add those together, and then take the square root of it. So that's the distance formula, and so now let's see how to use it. So example one, we want to find the distance between these two points, negative 5, 1, and 7, negative 3. So you can use the formula, just basically label one of these x1, y1, it doesn't matter which one, and label the other one x2, y2, and write out your formula. d is equal to the square root of the difference in the x's squared plus the difference in the y's squared. And so now go replace your numbers with your x1s and your y1s. So subtract the x's, you get 7 minus negative 5 squared. Subtract the y's, you get negative 3 minus 1 squared. 7 minus negative 5, that becomes a 7 plus 5, which is 12 squared. Negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4, so you get negative 4 squared. 12 squared is 144. Negative 4 squared is 16. 144 and 16 is 160. So um, remember, whenever you have a square root, you have to make sure it's completely simplified. So basically, is there a perfect square that can go into there? Yes, there's actually two. Four goes in there, but even bigger than four, 16 goes into there. That's 16 times 10. The square root of 16 is four. So that's four square root of 10. So that's the exact answer 
So your homework may ask you for an exact answer or it may ask you for an approximation. And so if you plug that in your calculator, just plug in four times square root of 10 or you can just plug in the square root of 160 and you get that's approximately 12.65. So if it asks you for an approximation, just plug it in your calculator and write down what you get to the nearest decimal that it tells you to round to. So this is rounded to the hundreds place. And so that means the distance between those two points is approximately 12.65 units. Okay, so now you try this one. Find the distance between negative 1, negative 3, and 3, negative 7. So pause the video for a moment and give it a try. So the first thing you should do is label your x1, y1, and your x2, y2. And then plug it into your formula. So that's the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And if you don't want to remember a formula, remember you're taking, you're finding the lengths of those sides of that right triangle. So you're taking the difference in the x's and the difference in the y's and squaring it. So that's 3 minus negative 1 squared plus negative 7 minus a negative 3 squared. 3 minus a negative 1 becomes a 3 plus 1, which is 4. And negative 7 plus 3, that turns into a plus, that becomes negative 4 squared. So you get 4 squared, which is 16, plus negative 4 squared, which is another 16. So you get the square root of 32. And if it asks for the exact answer, then you have to simplify that. If it asks for an approximation, you'll plug that in your calculator and see what you get. Um, for this particular problem, we're going to find the exact answer. And so 16 goes into 32. That's 2 times. So this is the same as 16 times 2. The square root of 16 is 4. So the exact answer would be 4 square root of 2. So we pulled out the square root of 16, which is 4, and we left the 2 underneath the square root. And so that's how you use the distance formula. If you have any questions about anything, make sure you put them in the comments below. Other than that, if you want to get more videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Um, until next time, thanks for tuning in.